Welcome back to Knott's Grand Garage. Out in the fuel shed again today and uh, wrapping up a batch. So I figured we'd get right into part two of our Back to Basics series with how the heater works and how it's plumbed. Let's get right at it. Alrighty, it is a little bit warm in here. So we uh, got our oil pumped back up to the top for our third pass. It's, uh, that oil flowing through here is around 180 degrees. That's about what I run at. And uh, yeah, it's gotten a, a little warm in here. But uh, anywho, let's get into the heater setup. Now, obviously I run the WVO Designs unit on my 6,000 RPM Extreme Centrifuge. Uh, I've got it currently wired for 120 volts, which this 120 volt unit. It's the only power I've got out to this shed, and it works well enough. But uh, how I've got this set up is how I would suggest setting up any heater unit, whether you're running one from WVO Designs, whether you're running the one from PA Biodiesel, whether you're running a homemade setup. doesn't really make any difference because you're doing the same thing. So set it up. Uh, this way will eliminate a lot of problems for you. So coming off of the drum, as you can see, we've got our main shutoff valve and our flow valve. We already discussed all of that. We come down into the bottom of the heater. You notice the heater is below the height of the gravity feed drum. Reason for that, which it's very important, is to keep this element submerged in oil at all times, anytime this thing's in operation. So even if the drum runs out, this is never going to be empty unless you drain it out. Um, that way, if uh, you're not at home or not around when a batch finishes, this heater's got a thermostat on it, it's going to cycle on and off. It's not gonna burn the heater up as long as it stays submerged in oil. If it isn't submerged, you'll burn the element out and do it quickly. So set it up like this, feed the heater from the bottom the outflow of the top needs to go to the centrifuge. Now, down here on the bottom, you can see uh, how it comes from uh, WVO Designs. It's got a plug in it to make draining possible. I change that out for a pipe nipple and a section of hose. I will change this up eventually, but I've got a ball valve on here and I will show you why. If I crack this valve open, which I just ran a batch through, Water is what I'm getting out at first, and then comes the oil, which that's, you know, 180 degrees right now. So water will settle out in this unit by design. So having a way to drain this off easily is key. Um, as far as the wiring on these units go, I'm not gonna get too much into that. Uh, the manual covers it pretty well. If you pay attention to the pictures, uh, I also did a short video, which I'll put a link to that in the video description that covers how to wire this thing up. If you're using the one from WVO Designs, it is a two voltage setup. It's multi-voltage, so you can run this with 120 or 240. Um, if you try to wire it for 120 and apply 240 volts to it, you'll burn the elements out of it and it's scrap. So pay attention to how it's wired. But yeah, I am using just simple reinforced vinyl tubing from the hardware store. I'm not a big fan of this silicone tubing that comes with the WVO units, but uh, don't know if there's many better options that can handle the heat. As you can see, it does like to seep fluids through it over time. It's not terrible, but it's something to know. Um, it can also, if you cut it short or don't position it right, you can pinch this off. So pay attention to that. But yeah, that is pretty well it. Um, flow in to the bottom of the heater, flow out from the top, have a way to drain it. Very simple. 
I run mine, like I was saying, around 180 degrees. You don't need to go above boiling or as hot as possible. It's not necessary. Water evaporates at a much lower temperature than boiling. Um, so as long as it's getting the oil hot and uh, thinning the oil, that's the key. The unit will do the job and uh, you won't have any issues. With that said, that's it on the heater. Again, if you need help wiring it, uh, check out the link in the video description. It will cover uh, exactly how this is wired. I'll also go on and throw a link into the uh, manual for the unit, just in case you don't have one. Um, if you are setting up your own, like building your own with pipe fittings and water heater elements and so on and so forth, pretty common and can be done cheaply. Just be sure that your uh, thermostat you use, do use a thermostat. Uh, make sure your thermostat you use uh, is working like it should. I've seen a couple guys have their setups get a lot hotter than they anticipated because the thermostat wasn't reading actual oil temperature. It was reading outside temperature of the pipe. So you may have to uh, adjust on that a little bit to get it right. But uh, anyways... When it comes to saving money and doing things yourself, you're gonna have to tweak it and everything else. So that's just how it is. With that said, uh, if you would, hit that thumbs up button. Helps us out quite a bit and doesn't cost you anything. If uh, you're looking for merch or black diesel gear, WBO Designs Extreme Centrifuges, like I run here, check out the website, www.notsograndgarage.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We appreciate you watching. And that right there is why the heater is important. This is pass number three, by the way.